This is the only route to success on Patreon, but I am going to tell I am going to tell you, I am going to tell you that if you possess these four keys, then you can unlock the secret to recurring reliable revenue on Patreon. So before we get started, though, I want to set the stage and also set some expectations. First of all, the opinions that I'm sharing here are my opinions, my ideas. They are not Patreons, nor are they anyone else's. It is on me, the opinion that is being shared here today. And it's based on my experience after seven years on Patreon. I had launched my Patreon page in April of 2014. So that is a little bit over seven years ago now. And Patreon itself was only formed in May of 2014, so I was on board before the service was even one full year old. As I said, that does confer upon me OG status. Now, over that time, I've modified my account strategy several times as I've learned what works and what does not work on Patreon. But Patreon has consistently been there for us. And over seven years, it has generated over $400,000 in income so far. That is significant. And it continues to provide to be one of my financial pillars, generating income reliably month after month. And I got to tell you, as a creator, being able to count on consistent, reliable income, it's a godsend. It is really taking a lot of pressure off of me. So I want to start by getting on the same page with our terms, because I'll be using these a few terms over and over again. And I want to make sure that we have absolute clarity between us what I'm referring to with these terms. And the first term is creators. I've been using it already a lot. Creators are those of us who create some content as a part of our online business. Content can be videos or podcasts or blog posts or live streams or more traditional offerings like music, artwork, animation, books, graphic novels. Content can be training. It can be instruction. It can be motivational or it can be advice-based. It can be educational or entertaining or both, hopefully both. And creators, our first term, were defined by the content that we create. Where creators distribute and share their content is our next term. That term is platform. And like a political platform, it's made kind of up of planks. Your social networks, your mail list, everybody's platform looks a little bit different. But it's the places that your content is shared. Personally, for me, my platform is first and foremost my YouTube channel, then my podcast, our webinars, this webinar here is a part of our platform, my mail list. Those are the places where I'm well established and I reach out to my community and I've built an audience. That is my platform. You will know what your platform is because it's the place where you publish your content. And then patrons, well, there are supporters, but we can also look at them as members of our membership. But one thing I never consider patrons to be, and we will talk more about this later, is customers. Patrons appreciate and they consume the content that we create and they see value in that content and are willing to, or hopefully happy, to pay to support us in the creation of that content. And finally, this is one of the terms that I struggle with the most. Uh, and I, maybe it's just an internal uh, kind of a, a, an internal switch for me, but campaigns and pages, they're kind of interchangeable terms in the Patreon world. They, see, they are the offer that Patreon creators make to their patrons. They're the perks and their benefits. Now, we sometimes call them your Patreon page because there's an anchor page on Patreon where you share all of the details. And this is where people sign up to support you. So we often end up what we call uh, our Patreon offering, our Patreon page. And how we support our community and how we grow it, kind of the strategy behind it, that's our Patreon campaign. It's the mechanism that, uh, that encourages people to support us. So when Patreon creators talk to each other, we use these terms interchangeably. We refer to our Patreon accounts as campaigns or pages. And I just think that that can sometimes be confusing. So when I talk about Patreon pages and campaigns, I'm really talking about the account that we have and how it moves forward. Patreon was originally launched because there's always been a disconnect between creators and their fans. It was envisioned by Jack Conti, who was frustrated by how musicians were being treated by the major players online. And musicians are in many ways the poster child of Patreon. Historically, they've been taken advantage of by middleman after middleman. In the advent of the internet, though, and streaming music service, it threatened to break the hold of major record labels, so musicians could, for the first time, see a new path forward, only, unfortunately, to have that path hijacked by iTunes and other gatekeepers. 
Uh, so Patreon was born out of that frustration that yet again, creators were being held hostage by these gatekeepers. Access to their fans was managed through this middleman. iTunes was, is the kind of the, the, the black hat in this particular round. So the goal was to create a mechanism to give creators direct access to their fa- fans. Of course, the more cynical amongst us will point out that one middleman, say iTunes, has been replaced by another middleman, Patreon. After all, what is Patreon if not a middleman? That's a fair point. But transparency and control are the key. You see, when a p- creator has a relationship with Patreon, they know up front what Patreon's cut is going to be. The creators set their own prices and their own benefits. Creators also can download their supporter list at any time, email them directly, and have direct conversations with them. This is huge. You see, Patreon controls the platform, but the creators control the content and the relationship. Now, there's always going to be some friction, of course, but this is vastly different than what came before. So let me explain it again, just because it is so important. Unlike Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or TikTok or any other social platform, and unlike Amazon or Audible or iTunes or Spotify or any other service, The creator owns the relationship. A publisher on YouTube cannot download their list of email addresses from YouTube and directly reach out to them. A publisher on Patreon can. The patron, sorry, the Patreon creator owns the relationship, whereas Patreon owns the platform. So let's start by looking at how we fit into Patreon. And I think there's three kind of creator archetypes in Patreon, and I'm going to share them with you. And I think almost all creators fall into one or sometimes more than one of these three broad categories, but these are broadly the way that Patreon campaigns are run. The first is education and it's training course-based skills. Now those courses can be on anything. They can be on art or music or programming. They can be DIY, home improvement or, or that the like. They can be academically focused on math or writing. Um, And we will lump all of these creators into the knowledge category, creators who create knowledge products. Next are premium or gated content. These are typically podcasts, serial stories. Uh, They could be video series. Uh, They could be uh, a series of stories, or they could be a book that's being released chapter by chapter, a serial story that's being released chapter by chapter. It can be music. It's content that the patron is paying for the production of, and they're going to consume primarily from an entertainment point of view. They are looking to be entertained. So this is the closest thing to Patreon being a Netflix or a YouTube where we're delivering entertainment-based content to the community, which is gated. It's gated and it's not there for the general public. The term gated means it's not there for the general public, but it's only there for the for the ent- enjoyment and for the benefit of the patrons. It's behind some sort of a, well, we would call it a paywall if we were talking about a newspaper or a podcast that was being published directly, but it's behind the Patreon paywall at that particular point. It's behind the membership wall in Patreon. And where these really work well is when you have a repository of older content. We often will see podcasters only have, say, their last five episodes of the podcast available to the public, but they have a back catalog of maybe hundreds of podcasts that are just available to their patrons. It's a terrific model for that. And then the third business model is fan sites. It's access. It's about having a relationship with the creator. Um, And it's all about increased interaction and access to that creator. Now, this can be A, B, or C-list celebrities, as well as specialized content. Uh, How can I put this? Um, Adult content, not safe for work. It's where uh, where the artist is giving direct access, intimate access sometimes, to themselves, to their to their patrons and to their community. Now, the key to this type of site is, or this type of Patreon account, is uh, backstage access to the creator and early access to the content. Now, other examples might be musicians releasing their songs on Patreon a week or two before they publish them on iTunes or Spotify or on YouTube, for example. Uh, we also see fans of TV shows uh, that are looking for more detailed backstage access, so hosting live shows after the broadcast of the show, uh, fan sites, uh, creating fan fiction around it, having occasional stars from the shows coming on, but it's all very much access to the celebrity based or access to the creator based. Those are fan sites and there have to be thousands, literally thousands of models of this type of site. 
But now I want to take a quick step back because it's not a perfect world in Patreon. And now I don't necessarily want to throw cold water on everybody as they imagine these different business models working great for them. But the reality of a Patreon account can sometimes be somewhat sobering. In fact, currently only 8% of creators earn over $500 per month on Patreon. This was the statistic that got me started uh, and got me down the path of wanting to teach people how to use Patreon more effectively. Only 8% of creators earn over $500 per month and only 4% reach $1,000 per month. But once they hit those marks, there's remarkably little churn and just steady growth. So once you kind of get past that, uh, p- past the tipping point, you're in great shape, but only 8% get past that first tipping point. Uh, so I've got a question for you. Does that number encourage you or discourage you? Here's my take. When I saw these numbers, I asked myself, what separates the 4% from the rest? And to me, the difference is actually pretty clear. Successful Patreon creators understand the Patreon difference first and foremost. They understand how Patreon is different from other funding models and they lean uh, into that difference. We'll just give it a second uh, so I believe that one of the reasons back. 92% um, of the creators earn under $500 a month is they really don't understand what here. Patreon is and how it's different. Guess, but I'm not so let's go there now. Let's, uh, no, I'm not Specifically, the first question is how is Patreon different from the main other funding models? I'm speaking of membership sites and LMSs or learning management tools. So let's begin by talking about the similarities because there are a lot of similarities. Patreon shares a lot of the features with membership tools like Kajabi or Mighty Networks and a lot with the learning management tools like Thinkific or Teachable. Now, a lot of the mechanical process of signing up members, delivering rich content, it can be accomplished by either of these services. And in some cases, the other services that we're talking about do so more affordably than Patreon. They might be a better choice. So this is a big part of your decision journey. If you're considering Patreon, you need to understand what the nature is of Patreon that makes it different from the nature of the typical uh, publisher on one of those other platforms. And I believe that the biggest difference between Patreon and all of these other services is on Patreon, you have supporters. On the other platforms, you have customers. There is a world of difference. In a membership site or a traditional course, you get paid for the content that you've created. People are buying it from you. They are your customers. The deliverable is the content that you've created. However, patrons support the creator's efforts to create the content. And the reward they get is called a perk. It's not necessarily purchasing access to the content, but it's being given a perk, a benefit over and above. As a result, patrons are vested in the success of the creators that they support because they feel like they're part of the process. They aren't purchasing the result. I'll, again, well, I'll speak from my personal experience because we have both models in our business. And in our Thinkific account, which is an LMS account, we have over 14,000 students. And I'm very proud of that. And I feel very strongly about those customers who support us and are on those platforms. But I, the 800 patrons who have stepped up to support me on Patreon and said, we support and value you and we want to contribute to help you make more content, well, they hold a very different and a very special relationship with me. I'm of the opinion that most Patreon creators see their patrons in a very different light than they see their traditional customers and most patrons hold their creators uh, that they support in higher esteem as well. You know, they're, they're your 100 raving fans. And a fan is a good term to, to, to use for what a patron is because they are supporting you because of what you do, not because of what you've done. I hope that makes sense. Then there's also mechanical differences between Patreon membership sites and learning management tools. Patreon, one of the benefits of Patreon is, is it's so easy to manage. So the creators can actually end up spending more time creating content and nurturing their relationships and less time uh, administering their community. And there are very few add-ons. You have to make very few decisions as you set up a Patreon account. Uh, Very few design decisions. Patreon is pretty much, it's kind of locked in one sort of format. So you can concentrate on the content you create for it rather than designing the environment that your patrons are visiting. 
And patrons will find it very easy to navigate because Patreon has taken on the responsibility of building a logical uh, user uh, user uh, access system that makes it easy for the patrons to get through it. Now, with membership sites, you can spend as much time troubleshooting the technology as creating and delivering content. And I speak from personal experience, and anybody who has installed a membership a plugin in WordPress knows exactly what I'm talking about. You spend a lot of time administering your users. Membership tools and learning management services, frankly, are amazing. They, the, I, use, I still use them both, uh, but for different purposes. But I can assure you, we spend a lot of time and energy administering those membership tools, uh, time that we could be spending creating uh, more content that our community craves and that actually ends up making us money. Patreon lets us keep our eye on the ball, concentrating our efforts on the content and not necessarily on the management. Now let's get into how Patreon actually works. There are three main elements to Patreon. There's the feed, the perks, and then there are tiers. First of all, the feed. When you set up a Patreon account, you get your own private feed. It's sort of like Facebook's news feed or Instagram's feed. Create as post content and your patrons can view, they can download, they can interact with that content because they can respond to it in a variety of ways. And so the feed really feels very similar to the Facebook feed. And you and your patrons will feel instantly comfortable with the feed. It's very nicely executed within Patreon. Perks, those are the rewards that you offer your supporters. And also typically a creator has multiple tiers of perks. And those tiers of perks are our collection of... Uh, the, the, sorry, the tiers themselves are a collection of the perks based on the different pledges that patrons are providing. So you can actually take several perks together and deliver those to your patrons who are offering, who are paying at a slightly higher level. I think what we should do right now is I should just break away from the slideshow for a minute and let's dive into my Patreon dashboard and just show you the back end of Patreon a little bit so you can see what the creator sees as they interact with their patrons. Okay, this is the Patreon creators dashboard. The dashboard is the control center for patrons, for Patreon creators to be able to manage their Patreon account. Down the left-hand side, we have all of our navigation. In the center, you see an instant snapshot of where you stand statistically as far as revenue and the number of patrons you have. Any messages that you are, should be addressing are shared here. So this gives you a really good overview of, to manage your entire account. You create new content and publish new content over here in this sidebar. You can create new posts, which we were just talking about as far as the feed goes. You can go in and you can manage the relationship that you have with all of your patrons, including doing things like downloading their email address and gaining direct access to them, which is one of the most important things that we talked about. And here is a very important section, which is the page itself. As I said off the beginning, we often interchange the word Patreon page with our account, but this is where you go to actually set up things like the different tiers that you have available to your patrons, how much it costs for them to get that tier, and you set what perks and what benefits they have within the page in each one of the tiers. So here is our main tier, which is the uh, which is our ten dollar tier, and you can see down the bottom we have all of the different benefits that they get as a result of that tier, and you can add or subtract different perks based on the tier level. So this interface is what I was talking about that gives you total control over your Patreon account. You can go into your payment settings, you can communicate with your patrons, you can talk to Patreon itself dealing with your account, you can add features like adding merchandise, you can edit the uh, the outward facing content that you're sharing with your patrons, you can publish content, everything happens within this creator dashboard. And when I say it's simple, it is very simple in comparison with managing your content in any other type of site, the Patreon dashboard. So let's talk cost now, and I won't spend too much time on this particular area, but Patreon is free to join, but as any middleman will do, they are going to take their percentage as a cut, as a percentage of each patron's payment. Now there are three different tiers or three different levels, depending on how many features you want to have within your Patreon account. And each of those levels gives you some more functionality, some more perks and some more, uh, some more tools for interacting with your patrons. Over time, you'll learn which ones are valuable to you and which ones aren't. Uh, but basically it's going to cost you anywhere from about 5% 
uh, for uh, at the kind of the basic level, all the way up to twelve percent of the patrons' payments to you in order to use the service on Patreon. And this is a little bit of a misnomer because you also have to add on top of this two point nine percent, typically speaking, for the credit card clearing. So it's actually going to cost you anywhere about between eight percent and fifteen percent is going to be Patreon is going to be how much you're going to be paying to be on Patreon. Patreon won't get that whole cut, but that's what it will cost you. That's what you'll have to shave off of your uh, the payments that your patrons are making to you to recognize what's actually going to be transferred into your bank account. Okay, we've gotten through all of the basics. I think it is time to get into what I promise you, which are what are the four keys to success on Patreon? Are you ready? Let's go. The first key to success on Patreon is platform, the term that I used early on. If you have an existing platform, and by that I mean a podcast, a video channel, you are creating content and you have a following. If that is the case, you are have a chance for success on Patreon because we have a cart horse situation on Patreon. You can use Patreon to monetize your existing content and platform if you have one but it needs to be established first. You can't launch a successful Patreon campaign if you don't already have an audience. You can't do them in parallel. And this is one of the biggest and most common mistakes I see is launching a Patreon campaign too early. If you have a platform, you can move on to number two. But so often I will hear people say, I'm launching a podcast and I'm going to pay for it on Patreon. And they have zero followers on the podcast and they have zero patrons and they plunge ahead with both and they succeed in neither. The reason is platform comes first. If you have a platform in place, a successful platform, you already have relevance in your potential patrons uh, life. You're providing them some baseline value. We increase that value and we cement our relationship through perks that we offer. And it is, as I say, a lot of fun to figure out what you can offer your fans. Basically, perks are going to fall into five broad categories. Uh, Access, engagement, recognition, digital bonuses, or physical goods. Those are the, the, the prime kind of the, the, the prime things that we can offer as perks. And I, you know, I can give you lots of different examples. You can read through the list here, but you will recognize a lot of different perks, early access to, to, to content, custom content that you create, say a podcast that you release just for your patrons, uh, photos that you share with them backstage that nobody else gets, uh, you can have live streams. You can have ask me anything, or you can have online sessions for them. You can do shout outs to them. You can follow them on social. There are all these different perks that you can offer your patrons. We here at Dotto Tech for our patrons that follow us on Webinar Wednesday, we give them access to our Webinar Wednesday archives, a real tangible benefit with that back catalog, which I spoke about earlier. Figuring out the perk mix is one of the really most important steps that creators have to determine in order to find success on Patreon. And we don't always hit the ball out of the park on the first effort. Uh, I think I've been through about four different iterations over my seven years to find the sweet spot of what I should really be offering my patrons that really resonates with them. It's a learned process, uh, but there are are a lot of great examples uh, that will get get you thinking about what's going to work and what's not going to work. Establishing tiers. What we do is we mix and match the different perks that we have into packages for our patrons to choose. And those page, those packages are called tiers. So typically speaking, we ladder up value. So for example, you might give somebody f- uh, at $5 level uh, an access to an ad-free version of a podcast. If they go to the $10 level, you may give them a uh, ad-free version. You give them always what's available in the lower tier perk, but then you add a monthly live stream and ask me anything where you answer whatever questions they ask you. And then if you get to the $20 level, you get both of the previous perks, but but maybe we send you a piece of merchandise, a limited edition hat, something along that line. That's how the perks get tiered. And then you let your patrons decide what level they want to support you at. This brings us to our third key, which is ever so important. With Patreon, how you start, how you get out of the gate is very important. So planning a great launch strategy is essential because it's almost a double-edged sword. 
Uh, if you have a platform in place already, you only get one chance to launch to that platform. So the fact that you've already got a bunch of people there that are supporting you, the very first time that you present Patreon to them is going to be the most important time because you they're already following you. They're already your fans. They are your potential audience and you've got to pitch them properly the first time because you might never get a second chance. If they say no to Patreon the first time you pitch, they might never return and take a look even after you've changed the perks. So you need need to come up with a very successful, very on point launch strategy when you first start Patreon. And fortunately, there are some great models to use, especially one superior model, I believe. And I will talk more about that in a few moments. The final stage of success for Patreon, the final key is nurturing our community. Now, we work so hard to gain the support of our patrons, and it behooves us to do everything we can to nurture that relationship. And much of that nurturing comes from how well we deliver the, all the perks that we've promised. It, just like a social platform, consistency and reliability is essential. Meeting your publishing schedule, responding quickly to questions and problems, being visible in your membership area, expressing genuine concern and appreciation for your community. All of these foster a deeper relationship with your community, which provides even greater security for you. But if you've got all four of these keys in place, then Patreon can provide a terrific income vehicle for your platform. For us, it's one of the pillars of business. Now, this gets fun. If you have all four keys in place, you have a platform, you believe that you're ready, how much can you really earn, Steve? Tell about me the truth. You've, you've thrown out some numbers that $500 and $1,000, and we know you earn more. How, how much can a, pay, can a creator really expect to earn? So let us do the math. I've worked out a model that you can plug in your numbers, and I think you can come up with a very accurate expectation of what Patreon can do for you. Are you ready for it? We're going to switch over. We're going to jump onto my iPad so I can sketch out the equation for you. All right, I've got my iPad open here. Let's do the math. Let's figure out exactly what you can expect based on your platform as far as income from Patreon in a reasonable world. And I think the most important figure to start with, the baseline number that we need to establish, is how many people you have on your mail list. If we look at the mail list, I think we can extrapolate from the mail list a really accurate idea of what we can expect to generate on Patreon. So we'll start with how many email subscribers do you have? And we will, for this particular case, you have to excuse my handwriting. I know it, it's terrible. You have to, for this particular case, we'll say you have 10,000 subscribers. That's a reasonable number of email subscribers to have on a mail list, but it also represents a number that's really easy for us to extrapolate other numbers based on what your own personal numbers are. Now, if you have 10,000 subscribers on your email list, the first question I ask is how many of those are real fans? How many of those are, are your most strong followers? You know, that, that the raving fans that they, we would call them. And the 80-20 rule really comes into play here. If you have a mail list of 10,000 people, you probably recognize if you look at your statistics that 2,000 of those people will open most of your emails, they will sign up for your webinars, they are your engaged audience. Those are the people who uh, you have an opportunity to increase the relationship with because I would call those 2,000 people fans. And this math works out. I'll show you later on in my own mail list how, this, how, how accurate this is. And this carries through for pretty much everybody. That means that 8,000 of those people are soft. They aren't necessarily, they're followers. They aren't really committed to you yet. They're fans. They are the ones that unsubscribe or they don't stay on your mail list for all time and they don't open all of your emails. But those 2,000 fans, that's the group that we're going to start to work with. The number that I want to work out is of those 2,000 fans that you have, of those 2,000 people that open all of your emails that are your true fans, what is a reasonable percentage of those people to expect will actually support you on Patreon if you put together an offering which appeals to them? Is it 10%? I think that's pretty reasonable. Is it 20%? That might be even more reasonable. So if we look at probably somewhere between 10 and 20% of those followers will convert to support you on Patreon, that means that you can start by considering right at the beginning that you could have, say, between 200 and 400 Patreon supporters just from your existing list. I think that's a very reasonable expectation. So now let us continue and let's work out the next phase of math. So statistics will tell us that on Patreon, the average contribution 
of a patron to a creator is $7. That is the average Patreon contribution. The average creator gets, it's actually between $7 and $12, but $7 is kind of at the low end of that scale. So let's say that you have 200 fans who will convert at $7 per month or $7 per event on Patreon to support you. What does the math work out to? And at that point there, you have 200 times seven is $1,400 per month. That already puts you in the top 4% of support on Patreon, just if 10% of your fans support you. Have I overstated? Do you, do you think that 10% of your fans is a excessive or a high number to expect support from? How does the math work if we go to say 5% or even 2.5% based on the other numbers that we've, that we've illustrated? So at 5% times uh, is 100 followers, which will equal $700 per month. And of course, 2.5% will be half of that. So it'll be $350 dollars per month. Now, do you need some proof? Let's let's go through and let's take a look at and see if we can prove some of these numbers out to you. So, I'm going to take you into my real numbers. You're going to I'm going to completely pull back the curtains and show you that this math works. So, first of all, this is my Infusionsoft, my Keep account, and you can see here that we currently have 35,715 subscribers. So let's just mark this down. Let's mark this down as 35,000, we'll just say round it out to 35,000 email subscribers on our list. That's first proof number one. We're going to use that as our baseline number. But before we do that, I want to go in and I want to show you some of our email, st email open rate statistics. If I go in and view our existing email that we send out. Now we send out some specialized emails that are just for certain vertical groups, but the ones I want to show you are our This Week in Dotto Tech. Those are our general emails that go out to our entire mail list. So here is a week ago, This Week in Dotto Tech. If we scroll across, we see their open rate 20%. Bang on with what I said as far as the 80-20 rule. You want more proof? Let's go down to another Dotto Tech This Week. Going back uh, in February, 19%, right within the right within the margin of error. Go down to Dotto Tech this week, 22%. It proves out, these statistics prove out. 20% is our average open rate. We have 20% of our fans. The 80-20 rule works as far as I'm concerned. So let's see if the proof is in the pudding. Let's go over now and let's take a look at my Patreon page. And on my Patreon page, we'll see that we currently have $6,200 per month. Now, as I record this, it's just after the beginning of the month, so the number always drops a little bit, but the total revenue that we're earning now, US funds, or we're being, that is coming into my platform on Patreon is $6,200 per month. Let's run the numbers and see if my equation works. All right, let us take those real world numbers and apply them to the equation that I shared with you earlier and see if the math works. So based on our verifiable numbers, we have 35,000 subscribers to the mail list at Dotto Tech, and I am earning $6,200 per month currently on Patreon based on those numbers. So what was the equation? The first one was the 80-20 rule. And 20% of 35,000 is 7,000 fans. 7,000 fans. Now, what do we say the ratio was? We had 20%. We expected between 10 and 20% of those to convert into supporting us on Patreon. So 10% of 7,000 is 700 subscribers on Patreon or Patreon supporters to 20% would be 1,400 supporters on Patreon. Just uh, by, way, by way of example, we're currently at 755 patrons as of this moment, as I record this. So again, the math is proving out just over 10%. We said that the average support on Patreon is $7 per supporter. Let's do the math now. $7 times 700 subscribers equals $4,900. 
That's at the low end of what support we could expect based on 35,000 subscribers on our mail list. At the high end, at 20%, we can basically double that uh, times 1,400. And that math then works out to $9,800. In the real world, what numbers do we really have? We have $6,200. $6,100 in support. Right smack in the middle between the $4,900 at 10% and the $8,900 that would be at 20%, or $9,800, excuse me, that would be at 20%. The math works. This equation is accurate. If you can define exactly how large your mail list is and you build a successful Patreon campaign, a well-thought-out Patreon campaign, you can expect to generate monthly recurring revenue in that sort of a range. It gets pretty exciting, doesn't it? So as you can see, the math works. You can determine... I think very accurately what you can expect to receive in Patreon support based on the size and following you have of your mail list. All right, that is it. For All this. right, Does this so sorry about is the technical glitches, but so, uh, that's I the have way it's some exciting today. news. Uh, so let's go back to guys one thing now. Uh, and when we send on. out the replay, I will edit the un uh, the perfect um, replay with, without any technical issues into the replay so that when you watch the replay, you'll be able to see the end. Uh, you'll be able to see it. Even if it, even if uh, the recording is slightly buggered up, it won't matter because we'll make sure that you have a clean replay sent to you. And that will be sent, uh, this afternoon. We'll send it out sometime this afternoon. I, I also want to address one elephant in the room. Uh, first time we did this webinar, I recognized that a lot of people thought that I was saying you need at least 10,000 subscribers on your email list in order to be successful on Patreon. No, the issue is, or the, I want you to take from this 10,000 is a easy number to extrapolate. If you have 1000, you simply take 10% of the number that I shared. So 1000 Patreon supporters would be between what it would be between, uh, 490 and a thousand dollars per month in support. Does that make sense? based on that equation. And there's always going to be variations. The number of, if you have a small but super engaged community, you can look at the higher end. If you are looking at a community, which somebody mentioned they are on Twitter, or if you have them following on YouTube, not a mail list, but you have subscribers to your, to one of your social platforms, you're going to look at a lower percentage because they're going to be less engaged. So, but it gives you a model that I think is realistic. I hate it when people throw, you know, you can get multiple, uh, multiple six digits or multiple five digit income. I hate those sort of uh, uh, airy fairy pie in the sky numbers. What I tried to share with you in this equation is real world statistics that you can actually take to the bank and it'll give you a realistic, um, a realistic snapshot of what you can expect. So yes, you, and by the way, there's an email sequence, which is following this. And in that email sequence that I'm going to be sending you over the next few days, I have a link to the, the you can download the entire, we've built the calculator as a model for you, uh, that you can download a spreadsheet. You can plug in your own numbers that is going to be sent to you. So make sure you open your emails because that is coming in the follow up sequence. I think it's, I think it's gold. I'm really you can tell I'm proud of how it worked out because I spent so much time trying to figure out how to share that part of the story because it's so important. You have to decide if you're going to invest in it and you have to have a realistic expectation. The worst thing is to have unrealistic expectations and to be disappointed. That, 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 that crushes our spirit, does it not? So let me get on with the, with the, with the, with, with my sales part of this because darn it all, this is a sales and a pitch webinar. Let me tell you what we've done. If you found uh, what we just covered to be exciting, uh, and I hope you did, then uh, this may be for you. And I am announcing that we are starting a Patreon boot camp. It's 30 days to a su successful Patreon launch. I put this program together, pulling together all seven years of experience that I have on Patreon. And I've coached many successful Patreon creators. But I wanted to create a system that you can rely on to take all of your hard work developing your platform and successfully launch it on Patreon. And I believe this is a great program. Now, I don't want to spend too much time selling you on the whole bootcamp idea because we're already coming close to the hour and uh, I want to get a few questions in. But essentially, I want to fill you in on how the bootcamp is going to work. It starts next Monday. There's, uh, it lasts for 30 days. Uh, we deliver lessons five days a week, work days, business days. Every week we drop, every weekday we drop one new training, 20 lessons in total. And every Friday we have a live 
uh, a live lesson. So four pre-recorded lessons, one live session per week. The modules are for the most part, I'm are fairly short, eight to, well, no, none of them are eight minutes yet. 12, 12 minutes average. There is one longer module, which is when we do the, when we teach you how to do a, a launch. And I'll explain that in a moment. Now, the boot camp isn't for everyone. Uh, it's we're only offering it to creators who are ready to take advantage, who are have a mature enough offering that they can actually have a real good chance of success on Patreon. Uh, so you have to have a platform in place. You can't be building your platform; it has to be in place. Because we're not teaching you how to build the platform at this point. We're not teaching you how to grow your mail list. We're teaching you how to leverage your existing platform. So there's actually going to be an approval process. If you decide you want to sign up for the boot camp, you're going to have to fill out an application form, which we will evaluate very quickly, just to make sure that that we can deliver the value that we want with to you within the within the course. And the focus is going to be, we're going to take a look back on those four keys that I talked about. If we look at those, we really start the Patreon bootcamp at the second key. The first key is platform. We're not covering platform. We're going to start by teaching you how to build your perks, how to build out your Patreon offerings so that you can create the value for your patrons to make it, to, to excite them and to get them on board. Then we're going to teach you how to launch your Patreon campaign, how to plan a launch and how to have a successful launch because that is so important. And then nurturing your Patreon following. It's, it's really designed to take you from, if you have a platform, right through the whole execution of a Patreon launch. And I'm also make sure that I identify all of the pitfalls and traps that many Patreon creators fall into. And now for the kicker, this is awesome. We're going to host the entire bootcamp inside of Patreon. Patreon's a perfect delivery platform for this because of the way the feed works. So you will experience both sides of the Patreon experience. As a member of the bootcamp, you will be in Patreon at the way that your members, the way that your supporters will be, and you'll be able to experience it from that side while we teach you how to manage the administrative side. I think it's a stroke of genius. All comments, questions, suggestions, all going to be shared in the feed, which is, I there's multiple benefits to, to, to having it set up that way. So I'm not going to go through the content that we're going to be covering. You can read the slide very quickly, uh, but we are short on time. We try, I, you're just going to have to trust the fact, I think, that we, that we have put so much thought into the creation of this course uh, and that we cover all aspects as you go through the modules. There is a seven-day money-back guarantee. From the time the course starts, if you don't find value in that first week, we have a refund period that starts, that ends at the end of the first week. So there's no risk to you if you decide to sign up, you, you can pull out of it at the end of the first week. But after that, everybody's in for the, for the long haul. Um, you can see all of the different content that we're going to be covering. We cover everything from how you create your content, how you manage your, how you manage your Patreon account, and now also very important, how you manage yourself and your relationship with your patrons to avoid burnout and to avoid, because Patreon, customers burn us out. Patrons, we feel even more indebted to. And so we have to set proper barriers in place and expectations in place for our patrons and also for ourselves to make sure we can continue to deliver and we don't go through burnout. Anybody who's a YouTube creator or a podcaster or a blogger, we all experience burnout at some point. We all experience that stress. Last thing we need to do is layer on more in Patreon. So we're going to teach you the techniques to avoid burning out because that would be the worst thing to do. I got to tell you, I'm really excited about this. One of the other aspects that is going to be so amazing with this program is you're going to be working with other creators that are at your same level, your peers. Because of the way we're delivering the course content in the Patreon newsfeed, it means that you're going to be sharing ideas and suggestions and supporting each other, other creators. So if you're a podcaster, you're going to be learning from bloggers and YouTubers and artists, and you're going to be exchanging ideas back and forth, and it's going to be a rising tide. I love the idea that we're all going to be collaboratively working on this through the entire process. Of course, I'll be part of the process as well. So I think it's just, it's going to be a terrific environment. It's going to be a special month with uh, uh, we are accepting applications right now. April is dropping the link into the to the page. Now, you've only got a short time to decide on this. We are closing the doors on Saturday midnight uh, so that that's, I have Sunday to go through the final applications and enroll everybody because the first lesson drops on Monday morning, May 17th. And when the doors are closed for this, they're closed. We're not going to be accepting anybody late because we want you to go through as a cohort. It's going to be, you're going to be going through all together at the same time. Um, oh, cost. 
of course, you're all wondering how much it costs. The cost is $5.99. And that's one of the reasons the calculator was so important to go through because you have to determine if you take a look at what your potential income is, you can make a really intelligent and good decision whether or not this investment is appropriate at this time for your platform. Uh, if you if you have a thousand or two thousand email subscribers, when you do the math, you're going to say, you chances are you'll look at it and say, I can pay off this investment in the first two months of my Patreon campaign. In that case, it's probably a good investment. If it's not, if it, if it doesn't look like it's going to pay off, then it's not a good investment. But I think for a lot of you, it will be a good investment. Now, I don't offer those of you that have followed me for a long time. No, we don't have a whole bunch of bonuses that we add in to add extra pressure or anything else. We have one price. We do have one discount that's available, and it's available to two different groups. If you're one of my existing patrons, you get uh, one of the perks of being one of our patrons, and there are many of you here. Uh, it is uh, it's available at half price. And our Gray Wave members, we have a membership where we're teaching people how to build their online platforms. They also have access to it at half price. Uh, but they, uh, the patrons, though, still need to go through the approval process to, before, they, before they're signed up, but they will get that discount. And I'm going to summarize. 20 lessons, four interactive sessions, a community access, daily feedback from me and the team for the entire month. Uh, I hope you can see why I'm excited about this. I'm going to give a whole bunch of talented creators a source of ongoing funding, the source that they deserve, the security that I have from Patreon. I'm so looking forward to passing that on to the next generation of creators so you can take advantage of it too. I got to tell you, as a creator, uh, going from the feast and famine world of product launches, et cetera, to the steady income that comes month after month on Patreon. It has been such a balm to me and it's given me so much confidence and reduced the stress and the pressure that I've experienced as, a, as, a, as, a, as an online entrepreneur. It, is, it, it can do that for you as well and I hope it will. So with that, I think we better jump in to the Q&A and let's get April on screen with me and let's go through it. I have to apologize. We are at the top of the hour already. So we'll extend this session for those of you who are willing to stay with us and we'll answer as many of the questions as we can. For those of you who have to leave right now, the entire Q&A will be included in the replay. So if you want to hear the questions, but you have other things planned, 